we're going to uh, show show you uh, show people that uh, moment now and if you could tell us uh, in more detail what we're seeing and a little bit uh, of a heads up this has a little bit of a combination of uh, real-time movement but there's also some uh, time lapse in there as well so uh, if we yeah, can hopefully it'll be pretty obvious we <laughs> that's that right <laughs> oh. all right if we can roll the tape Well, you, here you see us uh, sitting in the VAB. The uh, the internal platforms inside the vehicle assembly building uh, are being retracted. You can see that happening right there. Uh, this is from inside the transfer aisle. That last shot was, and and here you see it with uh, all the platforms essentially retracted. One of the things we had to do, a lot of people don't know, was the very top platform in the building that had been used for shuttle. It, it, it's like a three-story building, and because Ares 1X is larger at the top than a normal solid rocket booster. We actually had to remove what is essentially a three-story building out of the VAB in order to be able to get it out. And there you see uh, retraction going on and then the, uh, the rocket first, actually uh, rolling out there. right there. And, and one of the things, the, uh, the night before, we, we had met long into the night talking about the loads that we were going to see at the four hold-down bolts that hold the rocket to the mobile launch platform. The, that whole rocket is only held down by four bolts going into the mobile launch platform. And so we had, like I said, a big meeting the night before talking about the loads we would see and, and what we would call red lines and yellow lines when we would slow down and maybe even stop. And, and those were numbers were, were up in the 300,000 pounds uh, region. And as we rolled out, much to our pleasant surprise, the, the biggest one we saw was around 25,000. Now this is, of course, the spectacular time and, and, and the one that uh, you know, took most of the team's breath away. It comes outside the building and they finally hit it with the big xenon lights there. Uh, like you say, not since the uh, uh, mid-1970s has a rocket this large rolled out of the vehicle assembly building. And, of course, this is, as you said, the time lapse as we zip along because the fastest speed we were allowed to do with the Ares 1X on top of the mobile launch platform was 0.8 miles per hour. And here you see the crawler transporter still a, an amazing feat of engineering is the crawler transporter with those cleats you saw going right there. Uh, each one of those treads you saw, and you're seeing right here, each one of those treads is composed of about 52 individual cleats you see going by the lights there slowly. Each one of those cleats, George, weighs one ton by itself. And, of course, we're rolling over the crawler way, which is composed of uh, uh, Tennessee River Rock, comes out of northern Alabama. And there's a truck that rides along in front of it that, that sprays water down on there in order to reduce some of the friction when we have to do some turns as well as to keep the level of dust down because, as you can imagine, as you're trundling 11 million pounds out to the pad, as you roll over that rock, you crush the very top layer of it. And did we have to uh, slow down any at all? It, it, uh, it's, I had the impression that we didn't have to stop. We, we, once we started, we kept on trucking. Uh, and we did, and we do slow down a little bit when we come to the curves. Uh, we certainly don't want to go up on two treads as we're going around <laughs> one of the corners there. Uh, no, we, we do slow down just slightly to go around the curve. You introduce a, a little extra loading into the rocket as you begin to make those turns. But uh, we didn't slow down uh, anywhere below uh, 0.6 miles an hour. So it was a, 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 just a tremendous rollout, and everybody loved it. There you can see us uh, getting out onto the night. And finally, uh, as we approached the pad, it was getting near dawn. All the folks out there standing and watching, it just obviously a lot of anticipation. One of the great things about working out at Kennedy Space Center, and you see this right here, is that if you work here and you've got to go to work at the pad, as you drive out to the pad, whether it's a shuttle or an Ares 1X vehicle, you actually drive underneath it on the road as you're heading out towards your workplace. So it's just an incredible thing to be able to go do as you're going to work that day. There's the crawler getting closer and closer. This was uh, the second crawler transporter. The, the first one we tried to use had uh, some serious problems right before we were about to roll out and go into the or bring it into the VAB in order to jack up the mobile launch platform and bring it out. So uh, we had to switch crawler transporters at the last minute, and our crawler transporter team, they're just an, an incredible bunch of guys. They got out there, and they turned to and, and got it switched and, and got this one ready to go. And of course, that's important for what we're seeing here. It's got to keep it level as it's going up the ramp, which is Absolutely. We have to here. keep, uh, you see the top of the rocket, that is a 5% grade. 
Uh, and for those who don't know what that means is the, uh, the, the slope rises five feet for every 100 feet you go. But you've got to jack up the back end of that crawler by as much as six feet in order to keep the top of the rocket level. We want, we want to keep it within six inches of being perfectly level. And there you see it arriving uh, completely pad B, speed it up there. You see the lightning towers that are erected around it, which actually give it better lightning protection than what the shuttle has when it's out at the pad. And, of course, a lot of folks coming out, George, as you can imagine, just to, to see this rocket and get pictures of it before the rotating surface structure was brought around. And just some beautiful shots with the, the sunrise hitting it. I, 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 could go, I could go deep metaphorical on you and talk about the sunrise of a new program <laughs> as, as our, uh, our rocket gets out there. Uh, but we, we really do, uh, the whole team believes very firmly that... Uh, when, when we do finally go back to the moon and onto the Mars, we, we know that uh, we were there at the very start of it and had a, a good hand in getting us started. So uh, let's see, we were about, uh, oh, this is the... Uh, Here comes the vehicle stabilization. stabilization system. Right, coming in to grab the rocket and hold it steady. We had a lot of concerns. It was a very windy day out that day that uh, the rocket was going to be rocking pretty good. There were some of our models predicted it would be moving back and forth uh, more than six inches. It turns out... Um, it was less than an inch, which gives you some idea of the conservatism we usually build into our models, and, and that's just good engineering practice. Well, I think we were about uh, seven and a half hours, I think, from start to finish. I think it was a, a pretty good quick trip as they go. Well, one, uh, one, one little point of, of interest is we said we haven't seen anything quite like this since uh, a Saturn V, but... Uh, if the launch occurs today, it will be on the anniversary of the first launch of a Saturn rocket, which occurred from Launch Complex 34 at Cape Canaveral on October 27th, 1961. And that was a Saturn I rocket. Saturn I. Yeah. Well, John, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I wonder, real briefly, could you tell yeah. us, when this lifts off today, visually, if people are looking at the pad, what can they expect to see? What's this going to look like? Well, this is, we fully anticipate that uh, in, right before T0, uh, it, it'll look a lot like a shuttle launch uh, with the following exceptions. Uh, the SSMEs, since we don't have any orbiter on here, no main engines, normally you see if you're somewhere around in the general area or even watching on TV, about 6.6 .6 seconds prior to launch, you see that the big plume of of uh, steam coming out of the main engines on the orbiter. You won't see that. You will not see anything until T0 when all of a sudden this solid rocket booster will go from zero to three million pounds of thrust in less than half a second. And when you do, uh, give you just a little bit of trivia there, this rocket weighs 1.8 million pounds, and if we go from zero to three million pounds in approximately half a second, at uh, 0.235 seconds after ignition, the thrust of the rocket will exactly equal the weight of the rocket, which, as I said, is 1.8 million pounds, and that technically is when you have liftoff, when uh, the thrust finally becomes just slightly more than, than what the rocket weighs. We will clear the lightning towers around there in about six seconds. Uh, this rocket will go supersonic in 39 seconds, and 124 seconds, or two minutes and four seconds after liftoff, the powered portion of the flight is over, and we initiate separation. The... Uh, then some tumble motors will fire on the back end of the solid rocket booster of the first stage. That will get it tumbling, which we really need it to do in order for the parachutes to work properly. And the upper stage continues on in a giant arc, and it will hit the water about 140 miles out, doing several hundred miles an hour and break up and sink to the bottom. The first stage, just like a solid rocket booster for the shuttle, will deploy parachutes, and we have uh, ships out there ready to recover that and bring it back, and we can inspect it and see how it did. Well, John, thanks very much, and uh, hopefully we're not more than about uh, 40 minutes or so from uh, seeing all of that. You can imagine we all have our fingers crossed, oh, we George. We do indeed. So we're now at uh, T-minus 22 minutes, 24 seconds in counting. We have a 20-minute built-in hold at uh, T-minus 4 minutes.